Here's what you missed on Many Realms. Welcome, Juniper Thistleweed, to the Trial of Induction. You learned the spell Entangle. Damn. Oh, so I'm learning spells. I'm afraid that if you're looking to keep traveling in the thicket, that's on you. We can't give you transport anymore. And you should, all the bet. Why are we in Elsie's house? You walked in here and started calling me Elsie. What about the trial? Yeah, what about the trial? The trial in front of you is a massive brown bear. Good luck. Hi, I'm Jory. I'm playing Juniper, and it is Liza Minnelli to be here. My name is Jillian. I play Anisha. It's Julie Andrews to be here. My name is Eli. I play Olivet Alvera, and it's Adam Driver to be here. Hi, my name is Jordan. Uh, I play Mateo. Uh, I'm myself. Catch me on uh, season eight, episode two of Suits. Uh, it's good to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm a third level casting of Major Image in the shape of Jesse, and this is Many Realms. in a forest clearing on all sides thick dense walls of branches and brambles surround you and trap you elsie spratt stands before you wielding her staff she has just summoned forth a brown bear to kick your ass as part of your final trial of induction juniper thistleweed roll for initiative natural 20. you can do it too mateo you're here as well all right seven the bear got a four great all right, so I'm just fighting a bear. You surely are. Uh, yeah. It's mad. You, you, you got like tame shit now, don't you? I it has bite and claws, I warn you. I have speak with animals. Okay. Should I speak with this bear? What do I know? I'm just an orphan. Oh. oh. Are you going to speak with animals? Yeah, I'm not going to use it again today, I bet. It also is not the same thing as animal friendships. It doesn't mean the bear necessarily likes you. Yeah. So you, what is it like for Juniper this week to cast her first proper druid spell? Juniper's a little clumsy. I think that's established. You know now, after opening your little bundle, how to um, complete the somatic components and wave your arms in just the right way and move your hands to get the effect you want. But it is clumsy. It is a bit awkward. It's unrehearsed. You're kind of improv this spell as you go. And you stumble over the chanting you're supposed to do. Your posture is just atrocious. But you cast the spell, and Mateo, you see her tattoo has never been glowing brighter than it is at this moment, where she is accessing the druidic magic that flows through her blood and casts Speak With Animals. You, of course, don't get anything out of this, but the bear says, Meat. It's nice to meet you, yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> and it charges you. Um, it's Mateo's turn first, actually. Uh... Okay. <laughs> That's really funny. That's very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I shoot a bolt of fire. You're going to use your fire bolt, Harry? At the bear. Cool. Roll against this burr. Uh, great. And it's going to be a sneak attack because I'm before him on the initiative order. Mm -hmm. It's flat pod. Is it off dex, uh, crossbow? Yeah. Then that's 19. That hits. Great. Uh, well, let's get all these... Dice together. It's a D6. Additional D6, you said, for... Uh... An additional D6 of fire damage. Do you want me to roll the fire damage separately? Sure. Okay. Ooh, uh, one, one, one. Uh, for three. That's custy. And then... Six. Okay. For the fire. Wow. <laughs> you shoot a bolt and it sinks into the bear's flank, um, which you may be having never seen a bear before, thought might not be as, like, huge and blubbery thick as it is. This bear um, is a sturdy boy. He's thick with three to five seas, depending on if it's midwinter or anyway. And uh, while the fire singes his fur and causes him to growl in pain, your bolt is not especially effective. In fact, it was almost the minimum amount of effective it could have been. <laughs> now it's the bear's turn, and it hasn't even noticed uh, Mateo's attack as it charges Juniper with its big bear parts. What's your AC? 
Me? At 11. So it misses you with its claws, but it does get you with a big chomp to the shoulder. You take eight points of damage, Juniper. Aye. Okay. Uh, and the bear roars and says, Tasty! Oh, I really regret knowing what you're saying. Now, Juniper, it's your turn. All right, so I'm going to pull out my short sword mm -hmm. and try that. Fifteen. That hits. All right. Five. You swipe at it um, and cut a small gash in its forearm as it swipes at you with its paw. Uh, Mateo, it's your turn. I will get as far away as I can from it and reload my crossbow. I don't believe I can do more than that in a round. I think it's a action to reload. Okay. Um, you hear a voice say, Mateo! Elsie Spratt uh, looks at you with a stern expression, and she says, It's not your place to help out here. This is Juniper's trial. Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm just making sure that I'm ready in case it turns on me. Uh, I'll be sure that it doesn't. That's why I'm here. Okay. I reload the crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> she starts walking over towards you. And it is the bear's turn. And the bear is going to try to keep eating you, Juniper. Tasty, tasty girl. This time, both of its attacks hit. That's 21 points of damage. Oh. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. I'm unconscious. Sure. Um, the bear uh, takes another couple swipes at you and then takes a huge bite. You can feel its sharp fangs uh, in your side and um, you cry out as the world around you goes black. So it's now your turn. So you need to make a death saving throw. Three. Okay. Mark a failure. Mateo, it's your turn. Elsie Spratt has walked up to you and she says, what's going on? Why isn't she fighting back? She is trying stupid, and I throw my um, pumpkin thing, and it's glowing this at the bear, and I'm all like, "Hey, hey, go, no, show it!" You know, try and get the uh, attention uh, of the bear. Yeah, and I shoot the bear. I don't give a fuck what else he says. Okay, shoot the bear. Uh, that is eighteen. Yeah, that hits. Uh, six. As you uh, launch the drake fruit at the bear, it hits the top of its noggin, and the bear turns to you and growls, and you don't hear what it says, so don't make sounds for it. Elsie tries to stop, and she says, no, what are you doing? And you pull up your crossbow and get it um, pretty good in the front of its chest. It rears as um, blood starts dripping down and matting the front of its fur. And Elsie says, no, uh, don't do that. That's, uh, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You're letting a bear eat my friend. Why isn't she using her magic? She tried. She didn't do a very good job. Um, and the bear starts charging <laughs> toward the two of you, and Elsie Spratt screams. Okay, push Elsie in front of me. <laughs> okay. Um, the bear is going to attack Elsie. Oh my god! The bear makes two attacks whoop, against Elsie Spratt. The one person in the situation, Mateo, who has control over this bear, good call. Okay, the bear lunges and swipes across her chest as well, and she uh, screams again in pain this time, not fear. It's her turn now because she uh, is going to work on their initiative order. She pushes you back, Mateo, away from the bear and towards the tree line, and she says, don't get near this thing! And she grips her staff, looks down at her own chest wound and over at Juniper, and she says... Damn it! And she casts a uh, healing word on you, Juniper. Thank you. And she casts it at a slightly higher level. And you are restored. Six points of health. Great. Your eyes flutter open. They always flutter open. Your eyes slowly open. And you sit up to see Mateo behind Elsie Spratt as she goes one on one with this brown bear. And she says, use your gifts, Juniper. What are you doing? All right. I'm going to cast, I think, Entangle on Bear Friend. Cool. Mm, friend. Mm. Yeah. So um, the bear has to pass a strength save or be restrained. Cool. Bears are very strong. So your saving throw is going to be eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your uh, wisdom modifier. Eleven. Okay. Ugh, it's a bear. Um, the bear fails. Hey! 
You, <laughs> which is crazy, this is a plus for the strength. You kind of roughly get to your feet as like <laughs> dried blood cakes your front body parts. You wave your hands again. You try again to channel this magic. You know you cast people with animals well. You think maybe it just wasn't the right spell at the right time. That's what Master Hemlock always says. Now you invoke the spirits of the forest around you to rise up and start writhing and tying and entangling the bear that's in front of Elsie. And it works this time. The grass grows thicker, nettles start swarming in like little snakes, and the bear starts grunting in confusion as it finds its steps uh, restricted by the heavy pull of nature all around it. What am I trying to do? Am I trying to actually hurt this animal, or am I trying to, um, like, de-escalate the situation? Well, traditionally, it's a test of my, and there are a few options before you. It's fine to, to physically uh, neutralize the bear. Don't worry about it. I'll keep it safe and I'll revive it. It's not a problem. But uh, if you have an alternative, um, I'd be open to that as well. I'm going to try to back out of this and give you a, a round two here. This really is supposed to be your trial of induction. and We'll look the other way on this uh, healing word. All right, thank you. Mateo, it's your turn. What do you want, Juniper? I, it's really best if he does not. This is really supposed to be your... Yeah, I think I... I think I can handle it. I say with lots of confidence, for sure I can handle it. Yes. Well, I will still reload, but I will uh, stay my hand. Okay, um, so we will move into uh, the bear's turn. It is going to make a strength save to try to resist the entanglement. Which it absolutely makes this time. The bear roars in triumph, uh, but you get to hear it and it says, Free! And rips its paws uh, out of the nest of vines and brambles that had entangled it and turns once again towards you with a an almost like malicious glint in its eye. Now it just seems kind of mean because <laughs> on how you did that. And that is its action. So it's going to uh, move and approach you, but it doesn't get to attack on its turn. That that 20 feet is considered difficult terrain, so it's a bit slow getting to you. It probably doesn't make it into threatened range by the time it ends its turn. Oh, yes, it does. It has huge fucking speed. It totally comes up to you. Cool, 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 cool. I really like um, Juniper being the person who's like in this situation, who's like the least qualified. Bears are scary. Bears are scary. She's like a small, young woman, and like everyone else is like, I have 10 years experience butt kicking, and you're like, I ate a seed. I'm gonna eat my berries. Okay, go, go. You get uh, two hit points for each berry you eat. And I'm gonna cast Thunder Wave. I can cast these as many times as I want, right? I'm going to say you can cast each of them once while you're, like, hopped up on druid magic. So the bear needs to make a constitution save, or it's going to be taking thunder damage and getting pushed away from you. Fuck, he doesn't make it. He's such a dumb, stupid bear. Now you're getting into it. You got that energy. It's energy, you guys. Energy! <laughs> energy. The bear roars as you lift up your hands and summon some uh, sheer energy to push it away. Uh, roll 2d8. Five. That's the same as my stab. Well, hey. The bear takes five points of damage and is knocked back ten feet from you as it roars. What? Also, Anisha and Olivet might hear a thunderous boom audible 300 feet. Yeah, we're going to give it like one more round and then get yeah. into that. Okay. Um, the bear is going to try charging you again. Misses both times. Confused by all this thunder business. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I feel like Purify, Food and Drink, and Long Strider aren't going to help me out. They're not super offensive actions. Or even defensive. Or even anything. Yeah. Love those spells, though. I rolled on a table. So I'm going to, I guess, go back to my short sword. Okay. And run up to him and do him. 11. That hits. Roll oh. your damage. It's big. Uh, three. You slice the bear, and now you can see that it's starting to look pretty bad. This bear has been battered, shot at, thunder blasted, entangled, uh, wet willied, purple nurpled. It's having a rough day. It isn't really able to defend against your stab very easily, and you find you're um, able to make a pretty clean cut. The bear says, bad meat, and tries to eat you more. He's not very smart. And this time, he eats you a little bit. You take five points of piercing damage from the bear's bite attack. All right. I'm going to just do some back and forth now, I guess. <laughs> stab. No magic. Just stab. I'm out of magic. Bear. 
I can only use each spell once, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five. That does not hit. I don't know about how this one's gonna go. The bear is still not dead. Wait, there's still a lot of dice rolling you're doing. That's 19 points of damage. Oh, bye. As the bear once again hits you. Absolutely bye. Yeah. Mateo, are you gonna do anything? Of course I'm gonna shoot it, and I think that she's a lunatic. So I'm done now. Okay. I've seen either of them. This is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I'm watching my friend be like mauled to death twice. <laughs> uh, so you're gonna shoot it? Yes. Okay. Um, that is a 11. An 11 hits? That's yeah, five. Five. You draw your crossbow, uh, take a shot at the bear as it is standing over Juniper, and get it in the back of the head. The bear lets out a kind of drawn out growl that ends up in a growl and a sort of. What's it say? You don't know. Damn it! <laughs> Pick a different class. <laughs> it totters and teeters a little bit and then slumps to its side and rolls away from Juniper, unconscious. Elsie turns to you, and her eyes are blazing with fury, and she says, What'd you go and do that for? Shut up! And I run over to Juniper. Okay, Juniper is unconscious and dying on the ground. Uh, I take the seeds, potions, whatever I would know that she has. I have a health. Shoving it down her gullet. Okay. You're restored seven points of health as you die, live, and die again, or whatever Mad Max said. And you see Mateo leaning over you, um concern in his eyes and uh you are once again in that same kind of spot in the meadow where you dropped a few seconds ago your eyes flutter open my eyes flutter open i get to say that <laughs> um i can say that and next to you is a slumped over unconscious bear you did it juniper what no, no she didn't what happens now Elsie spratt marches over with her staff she says i have never in my time seen such a Unrespectful. You are a lunatic. A lunatic. I don't really care what you have to say to oh defend yourself God, here, God, sir. I don't care what you have to say. I'm 15 years old. I don't care what goes on here. I've barely lived any life, and it doesn't take a genius to find out that this was absolutely moronic. What do you have to say for him, Juniper? This is your trial. What did he do? Well, he got that bear. I look at the bear, and I say, so, I guess... I failed, then? I should think so. You just wait till Master Hemlock hears about this. Never in any of the records has there been a trial of induction that has been conducted in such a reprehensible manner. She takes her staff and she taps on the top of the pedestal and the walls around here, the branches start to thin. And through them, you can see Master Hemlock himself by the glow of his mushroom top staff and behind him, Anisha and Captain Olivet. He strides forward and he says, What in the entirety of the thicket is going on here? There was a bear and it, then I was unconscious is pretty much the story as I know it. Um, are you okay? A bear? Yeah. Why was there a bear? Um, Elsie for the trial, I guess. And Master Hemlock turns to Elsie and he says, you thought it was appropriate to give her a bear? Well, we, we, we talked and you said she could handle something a little bit tougher and, and, I, and you know, she, she's, she's got all her fighting skills and whatever and this is nothing like what we talked about. Why would you do something so stupid, Elsie? And tears start to well up in Elsie Spratt's eyes and she says, well, it was gonna be my first trial of induction. I just wanna make sure it was, it was good and it was impressive and, I, I don't know, you were supposed to come and supervise, but I don't know where you went, and so I just tried to keep doing it, and, and he was, he was, uh, spoiling it, and he was breaking all the rules, and I think he stole some of the magic. And Master Hemlock says, Mateo, is that true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really not appropriate in the circumstances. Well, you just ran off, and we came up to find you, so if you found me in this situation, it's because you just ran off wordlessly. I didn't think you were zone? going to follow me. <laughs> I told you to stay out of the woods while I went to get Elsie. Well, well you screamed. We, yeah. we thought you were in trouble. I screamed because I saw another one of those sirens. So, so it sounds like you could have used some, some help. 
<laughs> Sounds like you didn't help me very much at all. No, we didn't. We said to fight a bear. Elsie is crying at this point. Oh my god, suck it up. Stop. Oh, I go god. over, I go oh over to Elsie. I feel bad for her. Works. Oh my god. No, no, she, no she, I go over and like... Kill you. She tried to kill no, you. Probably she tried can, to kill you. Can I was a little tried to kill you. No, she... No. I, I like put a hand on Elsie's shoulder. I'm like, no, it's... I should have been able to handle myself better. You're right. I didn't use the magic right. I didn't like consider whoa 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 yeah. don't apologize to this girl yes but yes, she, she was going to maul you with a bear captain, if you I wasn't maul. gonna let her da, da, da. captain you versus a bear who do you think wins well me but that's different <laughs> okay captain you anyone stop. versus a bear <laughs> I, I won't stop i was almost killed too captain all of it and I don't know if you remember, but I was brought here by you, and I thought I was going to have a nice, easy day today, learning how to read, and instead, <laughs> I have to fight a bear. And I know it wasn't my trial, and that's fine, but boy golly, I'm glad I was here. I'm a bit more worried about the siren beat a little light, light on Elsie. I feel bad for Elsie. <laughs> Juniper's right. No matter how we feel about what's happened, we can talk about it when we're all safe, somewhere comfortable, warm, and dry. Let's head back to Willow Run. He seems um, shaken and angrier than you've ever seen him, and Elsie is just a complete mess. Um, you know, nothing, no part of this night has gone correctly. As an extra sort of insult to injury, as you kind of stop arguing, drop your voices one by one, and start to, I assume, head back with Master Hemlock to Willow Run, the path in front of you shines with a golden light, and you see a siren standing there. Oh, fuck. Wax my ears again. She turns, she immediately starts talking to Mateo. She says, All of you, Mateo, we have to go now. Come on. No. Who are you? You're the guard captain. I remember you. And uh, you are the, the tower keeper person, right? Felix? What's the matter? You don't recognize me? Now, we really do not have a lot of time. Can we please proceed quickly here? I'll go. Where do you want us to go? What's happening? I need to talk to you. And I can't really do it like this for very long or very well. Who are you? It's Felix. Hi. Is it Felix? Yeah. You're uh, the weird tattoo girl, duh, <laughs> obvious. <laughs> I'm nailing this. Yeah, weird tattoo girl, Juniper. Uh, What's up? Hi. Does Mateo still have his earplugs in? I don't think you're able to like conceivably. How you doing, bro? I guess I start backing away. Uh, don't be like that, man. Come on, what's it gonna take? Can I fireman carry him? Mateo? I mean, I... Mateo obviously isn't just going to be like, Oh, it's my brother! <laughs> so, I might even be more... I think he's leaning more towards the side of like... How how dareth you? This is like a low blow. Yeah, and Master Hemlock and Elsie are both more on the freaked out side than the uh, convinced and, and blessed side. Master Hemlock says, everyone stand back, I'm going to dispel this one. Stop, you stupid old man. Whoa, don't be so hasty. Can't you see he's trying to trick you? How does it know? How does it know who we all are? I, 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 don't, I don't know. It spied on you. I don't know. You're not seriously telling me you think that thing is Felix. I only met him once, but he was... A short, young man who wasn't made of golden light. Look, we talked to Tom the Cobbler, and he said that a siren led him here, and he's still alive, and I think we need to start believing in something. And I want to—I do want to pick him up. You want to pick up Mateo? Yeah. Are you going to try to resist? Yeah. Contested strength check. 14. That's a one. That's a one. Um, <laughs> you scoot Mateo up in your arms and, and drape him over your shoulder. Mateo, how do you feel about this? You're uh, very angry. Fine, you're being a buffoon. Let's go. Master Hemlock says, I'm, I'm not going with that thing, and I certainly won't let my apprentice go either. But yeah. I do start walking with the thing, and I don't let go. Okay. Master Hemlock stares at you, bewildered, jaw slack. Elsie is still crying into his shoulder. What about the two of you? Um, it's research. There's too much we don't know to not... I don't trust it. All of it's going. I start crying. That's fair. A lot. Yeah. Anisha takes their quarterstaff off their back. They're they're ready, but they'll, they'll go. They'll follow. I, like, am looking back and forth between the two. I was like, I figure, okay, if everybody else is going... Master Hemlock looks at you, Juniper, and he says, you're, you're 
training. You were, what do you think you're going to accomplish by following this thing to your death? I just, I don't, I don't think I can abandon them. I guess that's the choice you've made. Before I go, I want to, like, assure uh, Master Hemlock that I will come back. He's reluctant about your ability to have your cake and eat it too here. All right. Well, I'm going to try to do that at least. Make a, make a persuasion. Is that a good role for this? I'm not trying to convince him of anything. I'm just trying to be like, I will be back and then go. It is, it's going to be persuasion because you are trying to say, like, I'm disobeying your orders now, but I'm like a good, goody, good girl. girl. Okay. 13. He looks at you and furrows his brow and says, if I see your face back in Willow Run, and it's not made of golden light, of course, um, perhaps we can sit down and talk. I nod and I say, I hope so. And you turn and you follow the rest of your friends as they chase after the siren deep into the thicket in Mateo Christ. You're walking for about half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, the thing is very bright, obviously. It's like a huge golden glow and it's very easy to navigate your way. It seems to have an ability to sort of even part the worst of the uh, brambles and underbrush because eventually you do go off the path and you start just hacking your way directly through uh, the middle of the thicket. Also, somehow in its company, nothing seems to trouble you. It's singing softly under its breath. No monsters emerge, no steer just suck your blood, no hyena men hit you with their hyena men clubs. You have an uncommonly and perhaps even uncomfortably safe and quiet walk through the thicket. If you try to speak to it, it doesn't answer you. It seems to be concentrating very intently on something. And after about that 45 minutes, you come into a clearing, a lot of clearings. Well, that's what the opposite of a forest is. A small stone house stands in the center of a moonlit clearing. The sight is rather shocking until you look up and see that dozens of feet of the thicket canopy have been cleared out of the space directly above this house, allowing a column of moonlight to flood the area. It's an amount of moonlight you haven't seen since you were last in Tower Hill. This house has a short turret jetting out of it with what looks like furniture and equipment set up on its roof and a small pond in front. And you can see um, strange luminous fish darting about. The siren says, okay, uh, just um, uh, like just give me um, a second. I'll just be a second. And then it vanishes. You're standing there, Mateo is slung over your back um, in front of this weird stone house for a moment. You're gonna put me down at some point too. I will. I can't open the door. <laughs> but not yet. <laughs> well, I mean, you, uh, how long have we been walking? Eventually you get a contested, eventually you get a chance to like break that. Uh, how long have we been walking? Fine, I'll fucking put you in the clearing. And open the door. Are you going to do anything that you've been set down? Well, I mean, I'm here now. Um, where did uh, my alleged brother go? And he vanished. Okay, uh, well then, I'm kind of along for the ride right now. Okay. And you're going to kick in the door? Mm hmm Okay, you kick in the door of this uh, small stone house and you hear Felix's voice from within say, Hey, 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 yikes, there's no need to do stuff like that. I said I would be a minute. And he uh, emerges from within the house and steps out into the clearing. It is Felix, who is a young man, um, probably about 18 or 19 years old now. He looks like Mateo. He has the same uh, short, dark hair. He's got a bit of a dirty teen stash kind of going. He's wearing um, oversized golden robes that are um, like way too big for him and kind of sashed around the middle. He sort of smiles nervously and awkwardly at all of you and says, um, long, long time no see? Yeah, I break down, run and jump into his arms. Hopefully he catches me. Of course he does. He's your brother and he loves uh, you. I'm absolutely inconsolable. Yeah, he grabs you and he holds you for 12 to 16 minutes. <laughs> I'm a wreck. He says, I don't know what I'll say. <laughs> he says, I don't know how you managed to find me, man. That's crazy. You left Tower Hill. Yeah, find you. You big stupid idiot. You didn't even write. I know. I'm sorry. It's all extremely complicated and interesting. You know, like a cup of cocoa? No. You want some good dorney? No, uh, yeah, I, would, I thought you make something and you use some of this and I pull out some good dorney. Hey, 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 look at that. You remembered something I taught you. That's good. Okay, everyone, I know there's probably lots of questions. 
I don't have all the answers, but a lot of them, maybe some of them. I don't really know what you guys are doing. Uh, we gotta just interface and chat about this whole thing. Um, Why'd you never come back? Because I couldn't. It's just, oh god, where are you? You said start you'd with come this? back. I was, yeah. I, I mean, waited the whole time. I, I wanted to come back, obviously. I, I got a little held up. Held up by what? Oh, I don't even know. Okay. Do you know what I had to go the... through? I, I, I've been living on the streets, brother. All waiting for you to come back. I can't believe no one took you in. They tried, but I didn't have anyone to tell me what to do, what's right and what's wrong. And I, I was left to fend myself when you left and you knew that and you never came back. I... You can ask the captain. He thinks I'm a total delinquent. They all think that I'm worthless. Well, that's not true. No, I don't true. think you're worthless. Well, I feel that way. Oh. I can't... I... Mateo. I can't fix the last three years or, or make them any different as much as I want to, as much as I wish that I could. All I can do is explain myself, and um, I hope that you would have the courtesy of listening. Yeah, I guess you can try. Kind of dejected, his shoulders slump, and he turns and beckons you all to enter the stone house. Inside, it is uh, lit by some drake fruit that line kind of the window sills and, and little ledges throughout. Um, it's a comfortable, tidy, cozy little cottage. He uh, brings you to a little kitchen. It's clearly like a cottage that's only, you know, for one. And he says, uh, I, God, there's so many. Okay, food first. Food first? Food first. You look horrible. I got mauled by a bear. Oh yeah, I was hearing that as I was trying to find you guys. Okay, uh, let me just, and he... There was one bear, but two maulings. <laughs> he restores you 10 hit points. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the rest of you okay? Physically, at least, we can work on the rest. <laughs> yes, we weren't fighting. I am death glaring Felix. Yeah, so everyone likes Gadorni, right? Uh, I know I do. And he heads off into the adjoining kitchen to start um, chopping up, and he calls over his shoulder and says, Okay, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I guarantee that my stuff is way more complicated than yours, so I'm sorry, but that's, like, the reality of it. Can we start with your guys' end? Because I think I know most of it, but not all of it. What do you know? Candle went out. You left Tower Hill, probably try to fix the candle. Uh, some other stuff happened, made your way here. Um, I don't know anything that happened in, like, a town, because that's not really what I can do. What can you do? Well, I can... Obviously, I can, like, watch you guys. Comforting. Uh, the... Most people think so. The candle in Tower Hill was purposefully destroyed by a woman... We think her name is Valix, and she took a wand and exploded the tower with the help of a necromancer... I don't know anything about this in specifics, but that's what we've been able to discover so far. Of course, with the candle gone, all the sympathy magic uh, has lost its effects. So yeah, we would like to restore that. Uh, think it's awful dark without it. No kidding. Oh my god, it was terrifying when it went out. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, try have that happen in front of you. I. That must have been horrible. I'm so sorry that you experienced that. Me too. And it's... <laughs> you came with them to help? Yeah, to find you. And you could see me the whole time. Not the whole time. As soon as I saw you, I tried to start getting in touch with you. Um, let me think. There was the first night, uh, you two were in the woods, and i that's when I saw your face, and man, I was so happy to see you. But i I was too happy. I kind of lost control a little bit. And I lost the connection. And then the next night, you were at the Fernwood, so I couldn't do anything there. And then I saw you guys get to Willow Run. I tried to get to you from the edge, but Hemlock's wards are way too... I couldn't get any closer than that. And you didn't really want to come see me at that point. And then he let the wards down, so I thought, this is my chance. And man, that guy's like great. I get his whole thing, but uh, yeah, just kind of kept severing my connection like over and over and then i was trying to find you in the woods and then there was all this bear stuff and i mean mateo you have to understand i as soon as i saw you i did nothing else but try to find you 
You know, it took you long enough. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Here's some stew. Uh, it's pretty good. Everyone, Why clink, just clink. Telling us what you know. Yeah. Um, well, eat your stew. I'll have to prepare stuff and I can show you. I'll give you the whole, uh, the grand tour. It's impressive. Do you all eat your stew? Yeah, I'll eat my Perfect. stew. It's delicious. Love this spice that I can remember what it's called every time. Godorni. Godorni. It's warm. It's citrusy. It's like putting a little bit of like orange zest on like a Moroccan nagine. And it tastes like home, obviously. And after you take a few minutes to eat and drink some water, he says, okay, let's start. Follow me. And he gets up and he heads um, up a set of winding circular stairs that lead to the turret that you saw on the outside of the house. Did you find this place? No, no, of course not. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? Did um, you build this place? No, what? <laughs> I can't build a house. Those are the options. No, this, I mean, she found me. Okay, 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 sorry, let's go. <laughs> he climbs to the top of the stairs and he shows you the top of the turret. And the top of the turret has a huge stone pool, circular, installed in the center of it. And the pool is bathed directly in the moonlight that's shining right overhead. And the waters have a beautiful silvery sheen to them as they lightly sort of ebb and flow around. There is a uh, big sort of stone chair installed at the end of the pool and um, Felix sits in it. And he says, okay, so um, we'll start here. This is the moon pool. Moon pool, you guys, you guys, moon pool. So basically how it works is he leans back in the chair and grips the handles and closes his eyes. And the waters start to ripple more intensely. Then they start to splash and sprinkle like something's disturbing the water greatly. And then the water rises and transforms and takes on um, the fluid murky shape of a diagram, a living map of the thicket. And under his breath, Felix says, okay, so, um, I usually just do like a pretty simple patrol, kind of go around the triangle. I don't have super great reach on this. Um, it is a full moon, lucky, so I can get pretty far. Let's say um, here. And he kind of waves a hand over and the water shift and form again and close up on a pathway illuminated in the thicket, everything made of spindly moon colored water. And you can see two travelers walking along the road, um, holding lanterns on the end of sticks. It's, um, it's Boffin another one of the lamplighters. And he says, so Boffin's there. Um, I'm not going to do it now because it takes a whole big thing. It's very complicated. But if I wanted to, I could pop out, talk to Boffin. They don't really like us to talk to them very much. Um, so I sing usually, and it sort of calms them down. I know it's not great, but like, you know, what if he falls into quicksand? It's a lot easier if I just sort of take the lead, walk him where he needs to walk and, and let him go, right? It's about keeping people safe and sort of like, uh, it's kind of like what you do, Captain, but much weirder. This is nothing like what I do. Okay. Um, any questions about the moon pool? Who is she? Oh, well, like Master Selway. Okay, that's what I thought. Does, um, is Selway still alive? Um, no, unfortunately not. I know, I know that's what you guys were looking for, and um, I can still try to help you as much as I possibly can, but it was about a year ago. And that's why I couldn't come back, Mateo. She, she trusted me, and she gave me all of these responsibilities, and she told me that the fate of the thicket and everyone in it depended on my ability to help her, and so I couldn't exactly leave that kind of situation. It's intense. I thought being the apprentice Chandler was hard. This is like five of those. Well, I trusted you too. You could have sent anyone, just any notice that you were even alive at any point in the entire time that you were gone. I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Master Selway, she was very reclusive. I think we all know that about her. Mm -hmm. um, that's why she invented the moon pool. She wanted to protect the people of the thicket, but she didn't want to have to deal with the people of the thicket. So mm -hmm. it's this kind of whole elaborate system to... Uh, help people and without letting them know that you're the one helping them and well i never wanted to or thought that i'd ever leave tower hill either brother but i did it for you so well i mean i'm glad i'm proud of you what what do you want me to say mateo i'm sorry you can't say the things that i want to hear right now you it'll just take some time yeah that's um that's fair 
Where were we? Um, you were talking about how Selway had died about a year ago. Yeah, so before... The, God, this is so complicated. Before that, Master Keon sent me to find Selway to get, like, a Chandler's badge, because I was almost in my training. Um, is that why he sent you, or did you just kind of go? I just kind of went. The, the candle shattered, so there was no, um, uh, no more apprenticeship for me. Keon must be pissed. Yeah, he's not happy. Um, he... Was that it? Just to... So this is... It's part of the, um... The apprenticeship is why you left? Well, yeah. I'm supposed to... Every Chandler who, like, comes of age, completes their training, gets the badge, and the badge allows you, like, control of the sympathy candles, yada, yada, yada. So I had to go and find Master Selway. I <laughs> really kind of screwed that up. I made it as far as Willow Run, and Master Hemlock told me that, um, she was last seen in, like, the this whatever, Misty Vale or whatever. And uh, I pretty much got mauled by a bear, more or less. I was out like a light. I didn't know how to fight. I didn't know how to do anything. Um, and she saved me. She found me here. And um, for some reason, like, I don't really know why. Instead of uh, just kind of pushing me back out to Willow Run and pretending she didn't exist, she brought me here. She said she was getting older and that she would need someone to carry on her work after she passed. I don't know. Um, if she really wanted that to be me or if she was just taking pity, but um, I've been living here ever since and I studied under her. Why didn't Keon mention any of this at our meeting? He must think I'm an idiot or something. Or he thinks I'm an idiot. That's fine. I don't know who he thinks is an idiot. Probably maybe all of us a little bit. I think another thing is that I don't know if he knew that Selway was still alive. He got his badge from Selway for sure, but that was like 70 years ago. So... I think he has some weird anxieties about, like, giving over the title and knowing if Selway's alive or not, so... Is he still sitting down? No, he's standing up in front of the moon pool and talking to all of you. I wanna shove him. We'll make a contested strength check. I'm gonna win. 22. Absolutely. Um, although he, didn't, he came pretty close. You shove him backwards and he falls into the moon pool. Um, the map of the thicket obviously disappears and it just becomes, uh, churning waters. Olivet, stop it! You, I, I'm not listening. You left this boy all alone. You have to be the most selfish, thoughtless, unbelievable buffoon I've ever met in my life. And I hope you're aware that you deserve to be ashamed of yourself for the rest of your life. Do you know what you did to this boy? I mean, it's becoming rapidly clearer. How are you not begging at his feet for forgiveness? What kind of person are you who has so much love and doesn't do anything with it? Mateo hates begging. He always has. Then I made a career of it. I really thought the village would look after you. Don't place the earnest on the village. This kid doesn't even know what it's like to be cared about anymore. What's wrong with you? I'm sure you know what it's like, Captain, to... <sighs> consider the needs of the many over the needs of the few. Isn't that your job? Yeah, don't act like we're the same thing. We're different. I don't have any needs of any few. I don't have any Mateo to go home to. Well, I'm sorry to hear that about you. I worried about how if I didn't protect the thicket, if I didn't keep these travelers safe, if I let darkness and monsters build up and overrun these roads, that Tower Hill itself might be at risk. And I thought at least as long as Mateo was behind those walls, I mean, there was only a certain amount of harm that could befall him. If you have the moon pool, can we find Nod and Balix? Are you sure you want to do that? You want to kick my ass a little more? Um, I was never on team kick your ass. I appreciate that. I'm um, still on that team. <laughs> I am on team kind of mad at Keon. Yeah, That's I'll, totally fair. I'll give I'll you be that, on that one for team free. Too. I've been on that team like this whole time. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I'm okay. sorry if I'm cutting short the, uh... Whatever you guys want. Um, who is this? What is this? Um, we're looking for a dwarf and a human woman. The woman has black hair. The man has a twirly mustache. The dwarf man, um, he practices necromancy. That seems like something notable. Yeah, uh, do you know where they might be roughly? They... I mean, presumably left Tower Hill. Yeah. They left Tower Hill the night before we did. What uh, direction is the old wall facing in 
northwest, kind of away from everywhere you've traveled. Oh, I explained that they left through northwest, but the only major, like, civilization that we haven't been to is Harcher. Okay, he uh, sits in the moon pool throne. He grips it and he mumbles to himself. He says, do you want me to um, talk to them? Say anything? Message? I mean, I think we just want to know where they are and where they're going, right? Give me a location so we can get out of here. So not reveal myself. The waters in the moon pool start to change. Um, they form the thicket and it zooms and then it kind of pulls back a second and he says, um, they're not together right now. Which one do you want me to check on? I think it was the woman's plan. Yeah. Right? I don't remember who Granny was talking to, but Granny mentioned that the woman had hired Nod. Oh, yeah. okay, right, right, Because you were driving and she like came up to get have a chat and then you guys right. became best friends. Okay. She hired Nod, so let's look for Valix. Okay. Um, the map zooms in on Tower Hill um, and the surrounding region. And um, a little bit east of the village, where things get a little bit marshy, the map zooms in on a cave um, nestled in the forest. And then you see a small pinprick of golden light appear on the map and blink like a beacon. And Felix is kind of mumbling to you as he's in the moon pool's thrall. He says, uh, I think she's in there. Is it, like, imperative that she doesn't see me? Because I can get closer, but it's a bit of a risk. Yeah, I, I don't think it's super important. Yeah. Okay, and you can't really see what's happening because in, in Felix's mind and vision. And he says, okay, I'm getting closer uh, to the cave. Okay, yeah, see her. She's got a little fire going. She is studying some kind of some documents there. There's some... Um, parchment that's been uh, taped to the wall. Looks like a map of the village. Oh, shit, I think she saw me. Um, can I can I get out? Can I get out? Get yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. He says, uh, was that helpful at all? No, we know where she is. We don't know what she wants. Do you, Felix, have any knowledge of how to restore the candle? Or even what, like, purpose somebody would have for destroying it? Well... Let me dry off for a sec. Can we go back inside if we're not using this anymore? Sure. He changes into a, an identical golden robe that's dry and loosely sashes around himself and says, Okay, why someone would destroy the candle? What do I know about the candle? Zoe so told me like a lot about her and Eulicon and what she called the uh, okay old days, mm -hmm. but she was sort of not into parts of it. She seemed a little bit... There's stuff she didn't want to tell me, you know? Um... Yulikon made the candle. Selway helped him start the channelry. That's why she makes the badges. Uh, sympathy Candle Network. Why would someone want to destroy it? If they didn't want the Sympathy Candles going, they would destroy the main candle, I guess. Does this person hate Sympathy Candles? Bad birthday? The candle lights lights the thicket. It's part of the travel network. It, it helps keep people safe. Well... We okay. know we know that she massacred Harcher like ten years ago. That was her? Yeah. That's crazy. I obviously wasn't there or here. I was obviously in Tower Hill, but um that's who you're going up against? She like took down a whole village. Was it just her? I, th I think so. Was she with the Nadia? Not no. ten years ago. I mean we just we just heard one person's story. It seems she had a troubled youth. Okay, uh, so I guess she either hates Sympathy Candles, or hates the Great Candle, or hates Eulicon, or hates round cylindrical objects. Like, I don't- I can't- mm. Can we fix it? Fixing it? That's, um... How could we do that? Is there any writings about it? Did Selway keep any documents? Yeah, totally, totally. Oh, thank goodness. Um, come on, let's go to the library. The library is in the basement, actually and has big, massive, giant drake fruit that take up like entire table lengths. He uh, has this sort of like pale kind of sickly glow because he spent his whole like last two years in the light of like only drake fruit and like not really going out during the day. But he moves in Selway's library with a fluid ease and he says, okay, um, Yulikon made the candle. Confirmed, obvious. How would Selway restore the candle? Probably by using, like, Yulikon's books and equipment. Okay, do I have any of those here? He starts rummaging, he's looking through books, he's throwing, like, books and scrolls at you and being like, uh, Like, lots of different cool magic stuff here. 
don't know. Oh, I've got it, I've got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Duh, got it, got it, okay. He runs upstairs, just hung on a second. And you hear him move some like heavy pieces of furniture around and grunt a little bit. And then he comes back down with a um, wooden, small wooden case. And he says, uh, Mateo? Yeah. Maybe you and your friends will find this helpful. And he hands it to you. Okay, uh, I check it out. Inside is a long silver key. That is the key to Yulikan's manor. Nobody's been inside there for 200 years or so. So I had a spare for when she had to water the plants. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way around like the booby traps in the wards? Um, I don't know how you guys are feeling sensing a lot of tension in the room. I can help you out, but it might take me a little bit of time. I mean, I'm like an okay wizard now. I got some sweet wizard jacked up magic skills. If you stay the night, I can maybe have some stuff made for you or dig up some of Selway's junk. How would we even go about rebuilding this candle, even if we had his tools? We're not Chandlers. Well, you're almost a Chandler, and no, I was almost a Chandler. Not. Okay. Oh. A few options. You get really good at channelerizing stuff. You ask Keon to help. If you really want, you can bring it back to me, and I can see what I can do. I don't know exactly what's going to be in there, but like, I'm sure that once we have, it's all about information. That's all magic is. Magic is just applied information. So once you have the information on how to fix the candle, you just like do it. It's like reading a lot. Anisha furrows their brow. It's definitely more mystical than that, and they think that's kind of. Bullshit, but <laughs> Okay, no one's no they, one's they coming to bat that for out Felix. Loud. They don't do that out loud. It's just the shit on Felix Hour. Oh my gosh. No, this is very helpful. Yeah, I should hope so. Uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah, so is the next plan of action go home? Yeah, we're gonna need a carriage. Barth has withdrawn our transportation. I'm gonna pull out the golden seal from the mayor and say, We're gonna take it anyway. Oh, okay. What? That sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> why Why are we stealing wagons? Because we're not going to get back through the thicket without one. Surely there's another way. Like if we had a siren friend to help us get there safely. Yeah, like, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I can help you. But you'll stay the night at least? Of course. Yeah, yeah thank you. There's not a ton of room. Anyone up for some more stew before bed? No, thank you. You've been very generous, Felix. Hey, thanks, uh... Tower master. I wordlessly ladle myself more stew. Yeah, I'd like some more. Hey, Felix. <laughs> yeah. When I told Master Keon I was leaving, mm -hmm. I don't know. He's. I still feel like he was keeping secrets that I don't know if what we've talked about really explained it. Why? What's up? I don't know. When I like, did he send you out knowing full well Selway might be dead and? What were you supposed to do in that situation? Did he talk to you about that? He said he was pretty sure she was alive, and he was actually right about that one, so I don't know how he knew that or not. I think, like, he's not that old, but he's like, clearly met Selway, and if you meet, like, if you had met Selway, she's not easily forgettable. She's kind of wacky. I think maybe he thought there might be some, like, issues with getting the badge. Like, Selway, um, like in some ways is kind of like resentful of Yulikon, which I know like Yulikon, right? Uh, super great dude, apparently, allegedly, but she was like, didn't want to talk about him much. Everything I know about the relationship, I like pried out of her or like got with like a couple glasses of cooking brandy. So maybe he thought it would be difficult to get the badge because they're kind of on bad celestial afterlifey terms. That's my best guess. Well, just because a master is skilled and talented doesn't mean they're necessarily kind or a good teacher. I've been thinking about that a lot, actually, since I've been here. And I mean, like, I don't, I obviously miss Tower Hill and I obviously wanted to come back. And I was thinking about what it means to listen to someone who gives you a responsibility, who gives you a command or instructions or duty and what it means to that person is older than you or smarter than you and more powerful and the more I thought about it and the more I learned here studying with Selway the more I realized that I don't think I want to 
just take orders from someone else without giving it a second thought. I don't think I like being an apprentice anything. Like, what is an apprentice? Like, an unpaid intern. I don't know. I think it is maybe better to face problems and tough situations with your own perspective than just listening to the echoes of people who came before you. Except people before you have experienced those same these mistakes and are stopping you from experiencing them. Well, there's two perspectives on the issue, clearly. Just a thought I had. And um, you turned off to bed. It's a similar Elsie Spratz crashing on your friend's couch situation. Mateo, um, you can have my bed if you want. Yeah, sure. I'd like that, yeah. He takes you up to um, the room he's staying in, and he uh, shows you the bed, lets you know where the chamber pot is it's under the bed, spoiler alert. And he says, um, do you have... Um, do you have your candle with you? No, I left it in Tyrell. Why did you do that? Because I didn't want anything to happen to it. You said that... I don't, I don't, I don't know, I just always wanted to keep it safe. Yeah. Why? No, I just thought you would have kind of kept it with you to sort of... I don't know. Um, but listen, it's very dark in the thickest sometimes it can be very helpful to have a sympathy candle with you especially if you don't have like a elfy dark vision or anything like that he um reaches into a desk drawer and pulls out a fresh sympathy candle and he says uh now i know the candle at tower hill's out so this can't do much but uh you want to know something what's that I'm a fucking wizard now. And he grabs the candle and he holds it up to you with a big, stupid, shitty grin on his face. And he passes his hand over it and it bursts into riotous, joyful flame. And as he passes his hand again, it changes colors. It showers with sparks. He draws lines of light, like with a glow stick and a long exposure in the air saying, I love you, Mateo. Um, he uh, draws a crude picture of you. He uh, makes the little wax droplets like fly up in the air and circle around your head and he says, uh, why don't you hang on to this until you get your first one back? Sure. <laughs> I, I guess this can be a good first step, but I want you to know, my, my last birthday, I ate cake from under the floorboards, so we got a long way to go. I better have some good gifts coming this year, right? I Actually, never. now that I think about it, you got three years of wonderful gifts. Yeah. And you just said that you're yeah. a wonderful, wonderful sorcerer, so yeah. I guess we can start there. Thank you for listening to Many Realms. Oh my god, Felix is back, you guys. That's so exciting. I had a lot of fun making that character because it was like someone who was as hyped up as Mateo, but slightly less mean. He's kind of my self-insert. That's why he's a powerful gay wizard with a moon pool. If you like that, you should talk to everyone about Many Realms and like our posts maybe once in a while, or just keep listening. Just show your silent, unwavering devotion that appears in my play counts. They always bring a smile to my face, every single one.